I'm Claire Schaefer. I am fascinated by the way garments are made. I have a large collection of Chanel designs and Chanel copies, which I use for research. I went to a trade technical school where I learned to make garments at all price points. Both the couture and ready-to-wear techniques on these jackets are frequently used by other designers and manufacturers. Today I'm going to compare an original haute couture Chanel suit with an authorized copy of the same suit. This photograph from the March 1971 issue of Harper's Bazaar shows the original Chanel suit. The cap line describes the copy and where you could buy it or order it. Neil Barr is listed as photographer. Copying original designs was big business in the 1960s and early 1970s. At that time, Chanel did not manufacture ready-to-wear, and it sold the right to copy the suits to manufacturers like David Dow and Jeb Lowe, and to retailers like Lord & Taylor, Marshall Field, Bergdorf Goodman, and Saks Fifth Avenue. The Chanel suits and copies are very interesting. At first glance, these suits look alike. But the suit on the left is the original haute couture Chanel, and the suit on the right is the ready-to-wear copy. Very few people would notice the differences between the suits. Both suits are in my personal collection. The Chanel on the left was made for a specific customer. The copy is a standard ready-to-wear size. The Lord & Taylor suit cost about $300 while the original Chanel would have cost about 10 times as much. This Chanel customer was short with an asymmetrical body. The pattern for her suit was draped on a dress form that had been padded to duplicate her figure. The finished suit would have fit her attractively and been comfortable to wear. Most copies are fabricated in the same fabric as the original, but when the original fabric was too expensive to import, a similar material was used. The Chanel suit is fabricated in a wool double cloth, which would have been considerably more expensive than the single layer wool used for the copy. The Chanel label is sewn to the jacket lining at the back neck. When you look under the label, you can see the bold duke or tape with the order number on it. The copy has only the union label of the national coat and suit industry sewn into the left lining seam on the jacket. Today we are going to focus only on the jackets. The Chanel has no machine quilting. Notice that the pockets and the trims on them slant toward the underarms. This is because the dress form does not duplicate the slope of the client's shoulders. When we look at the jacket back, we can see that the seam is not in the center. The seam would have been centered on the client since her right back was larger than her left. Her asymmetrical figure might have been caused by scoliosis or she might have had polio when she was younger. On the ready-to-wear jacket, the back is shaped with two darts at the neck. The Chanel has no stitch dart. Instead, the wool has been shaped with heat and moisture to fit the upper back. Look closely at the collars and trims. Both jackets have detachable cotton collars. The suit collars hug the neck at the upper edge, but a closer look shows some differences. On the Chanel, the jacket collar is a straight band, which has been shaped in a curve to fit the neck. The ends of the collar are on the vertical grain. If it had not been shaped, the collar would stand away from the neck, like a Nehru collar. The trim 
hem is a strip of navy wool that has been seamed to the jacket fabric at the top and bottom of the strip. The collar on the copy was cut in a curve so it would hug the neck. The ends of the collar are on the bias. The Petersham ribbon trim was shaped and applied to the fabric with top stitching at the edges. This is much easier and faster than seaming the trim like the original Chanel. Made of cotton and or rayon, Petersham ribbon is a narrow ribbed fabric with small scalloped edges. The detachable collars have been removed and it is easy to see the trim and the differences in the fabric grain. Both jackets have silk covered snaps. The Chanel also has a hook and eye closure on the collar ends. The Chanel has a brass button with some tarnish on it. The gold tone button on the copy was sewn in the center of the ribbon, but the button shank is extra long, so it floats off center. Here is the brass button after it was cleaned. The button on the copy is a good quality button, but it has had more wear. The jacket was probably worn more, and it may have had several owners. The Chanel has handmade thread buttonholes. The copy has machine stitched buttonholes. The back of the thread buttonhole on the Chanel looks like a bound or fabric buttonhole. The thread buttonhole on the copy is unobtrusive on the wool facing. This double buttonhole is frequently used by Chanel because thread buttonholes are often unattractive on silk or contrast color linings. This buttonhole is an easy to make faux bound buttonhole. The buttonhole welts are sewn to the back of the thread buttonhole. Lastly, the lining is finished around the buttonhole like a regular bound buttonhole. The detachable collars have been removed. The Chanel is completely lined with silk. The edges of the silk and the seams at the shoulder and armholes have been sewn by hand. Only the vertical seams on the lining, body, and sleeves are machine stitched. The copy has a rayon lining and self-fabric facings on the front and collar. All the seams on the copy are machine stitched. The detachable collars were secured with uncovered snaps on both jackets. The snaps on the Chanel are black, but the snaps on the collar are silver colored. The snaps on the copy are silver colored on both the collar and the jacket. The pockets on both jackets have no interfacings and stand away slightly at the opening. The pockets on the Chanel sag slightly at the center. On some Chanel jackets, the pockets are cut with a shallow curve to look like they sag. Unlike the pockets on men's jackets, the pockets are decorative and designed for minimal use. The Chanel pockets were completely lined and finished on all edges by hand before they were sewn on. Then they were hand sewn to the jacket with blind hem stitches at the sides and bottom. There are no seams on the inside of the pocket. The pockets on the copy were stitched by machine to the lining at the top and sides. The unfinished bottoms were machine stitched to the jacket. Then the sides were sewn in place by hand. You can feel the seam allowance at the bottom of the pocket when you put your hand into the pocket. Both the wool trim on the Chanel and the Petersham on the copy are finished attractively with miters at the corners. The miter seam is pressed open on the Chanel. The seam on the copy is folded with the excess ribbon above the fold. 
the wool strips on the Chanel are seamed to the jacket so there is no top stitching, while the Petersham on the copy is top stitched on both sides. Both jackets have three piece sleeves with a seam at the sleeve center. The three piece sleeves have a narrow undersleeve. Cheaper copies frequently have the traditional two piece sleeve. The three piece sleeve is a unique Chanel feature. It moves the vent from the back seam to the new center seam so the decorative vents are more noticeable. Notice that the Chanel sleeve has more shape than the copy and the fabric is matched better at the center seam. Both jackets appear to be too short at the front. This is because the bust on the dress form distort the front balance. Both jackets have detachable cuffs that snap in giving the illusion that the cuffs are attached to a blouse. Most suits have sleeveless blouses which would be cooler and have less bulk. The Chanel cuffs are a plain weave cotton. The cuffs on the copy are cotton pique. Both jackets also have French cuffs. On the Chanel, the cuffs have handmade thread buttonholes. On the copy, the buttonholes are machine stitched. The cuff links on the Chanel are plain gold toned buttons and do not match the buttons on the front. This is not unusual since the blouse buttons rarely match the suit buttons. These plain gold toned buttons were also used on other Chanel designs, so we can assume that they are not replacements. The cuff links on the copy have a chain motif with the Chanel logo in the center. The machine buttonhole is unraveling. The lining hems on both jackets were hand sewn. They have been ripped and held back so you can look under the linings. On the Chanel, the back of the double cloth is a smaller houndstooth pattern. The front and back sections have silk organza backings, which have been quilted by hand to the wrong side of the wool. The double cloth has more body and did not require additional interfacings. Here you can see the wrong side of the jacket front the horizontal hand quilting, and a dart in the organza. There is no stitch dart on the wool. Instead, the wool was shrunk to the shape of the organza. This is one reason couture is described as made by hand. The copy has no backings. There are two strips of interfacings on the jacket skirt to prevent wrinkling. The skirt is a section of the jacket below the waist. You can see where the interfacings are sewn together with a blind stitch machine. The total interfacing width at the hem is four inches wide. The bias cut interfacings are a medium quality hair canvas. The jacket fronts are interfaced at the shoulders, armholes, necklines, and front edges. The upper back is interfaced at the neck, armholes, and shoulders. Both jackets have chain weights to control the drape of the jacket. They are applied to the hem allowance, a scant quarter inch above the jacket edge. The stitches are hidden under the adjacent links. The chain on the Chanel jacket is a flat medium weight curb chain. The chain is crooked because it has been eased to the hem. This would allow it to expand with the stretch of the wool. The chain on the copy is a lighter weight. It has not been eased as much. Now that you have looked at the jackets on the two suits carefully, you can understand why the original Chanel suit was much more expensive than the copy. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and recommend it to your friends. If you want to see more like this, please hit subscribe. I'm 
Claire Schaefer. Thank you for joining me today.